We have team coverage this morning from Baltimore to Washington. Our senior national correspondent, Terry Moran, starts us off. The Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore collapsed after being struck by a 900-foot-long cargo ship around 1.30 a.m. this morning. We advised the entire bridge, the entire Key Bridge in the harbor. I advised to hold all traffic from committing to the bridge. The fire department described the collapse as a mass casualty incident. There's cops everywhere and there's police all up and down the bridge. While it's not known exactly how many people or vehicles were on the bridge, initial emergency calls mentioned several construction workers who were working on the bridge. Eight construction workers were on the bridge, according to the construction worker. We have one. There's seven unaccounted for. He said there was a dump truck, a pickup truck, a large truck, and a Nissan car that he knew of that was on the bridge at the time of collapse. This continues to be a search and rescue operation. It continues to be a very dynamic operation with multiple local, state, and federal resources involved. Witnesses have described the steel in the water forming a blockade around Baltimore Harbor, the ninth largest port in the United States. Tens of thousands of people traverse this part of Interstate 695 every day. Last year, more than 12 million cars crossed over the four-lane bridge, which opened in 1977 and extended over the Patapsco River. Let's bring in ABC's Ike Ajachi, senior national correspondent Terry Moran, Elizabeth Schulze, and senior White House correspondent Selena Wang for more on this. Ike, what's the latest? What do we know right now? Well, right here, we managed to get a different vantage point just to get a good example of how extensive this damage is. I'm going to step aside so you can take a look. That's the Francis Scott Key Bridge, and you can see that massive cargo ship in question right in the middle there where the apex of that bridge has since fallen into the Patapsco River. Now, we do know more about the moments leading up to this collision. An unclassified seismic report says the ship actually lost propulsion as it was leaving the port. Now, that ship then notified the bridge they might collide before crashing. Now, we're told that boat in question sustained significant damage, but all crew members have been accounted for, and also that no pollution entered the waters at this point. Now, as for the port where the boat came from, the waterway into and out of it, it's now closed, and there's no other route into the port, which is actually the busiest port in the mid-Atlantic. Uh, if you take a look, you can still see several police boats. They're off in the distance there, but they've been scouring this river since the early mornings, the onset of this incident happening. Terry, is there any sense of how or why this ship went off course? Well, that investigation obviously underway and urgent. Uh, there is an intelligence report that the ship did communicate with bridge officials here uh, saying that they had lost propulsion uh, and that that is one of the reasons that they drifted into that pillar, bringing the entire bridge down. Uh, that right now is a preliminary assessment of the cause of this. This is a ship, the 948-foot Dolly flagged out of Singapore, which uh, did have a record of a collision in Antwerp several years ago that's normal in this kind of business. Uh, but they are still looking into, obviously, what exactly happened here to bring this major artery for Baltimore, for the entire East Coast, down into the water. Uh, Selena, the White House says they're closely monitoring the situation. What kind of assistance is the White House providing? Well, Diane, we've learned that senior White House officials, they are in touch with the governor and mayor to offer any kind of federal assistance that they may need. I've also just learned that the president has been briefed on the situation, the collapse, as well as the ongoing search and rescue operations. He is expected to get updates throughout the day. As of now, he is still scheduled to travel with the vice president to North Carolina. We don't know yet if he's going to publicly address this situation in remarks. Now, an official also telling me this morning, and this is critical, that there is no evidence of any malicious intent here. The White House also saying their hearts go out to all the families of those who still remain missing as a result of this horrific incident.